Okay, so I'm here at Studio B in Sweetwater with Jason. This is going to be my first listen in Atmos. I want to get my first reaction. Then we're going to talk a little bit about Atmos. But the important thing is this is 9.4. 9.1.4. 9 9.1.4. So what that means is there are nine speakers at ear level. And there are four, right? Four speakers mm -hmm. up top. And then one gigantic subwoofer back there. So we're gonna get my first reactions and then we're gonna talk about some details of Atmos and this rig and this room. What songs do we have as an option? There's a ton of stuff already mixed in Dolby Atmos. Um, for me, I think the best thing right now is the new Harry Styles record. Okay. Um, yeah, the spatial mixes are just outstanding. Let's go. EDM. Yeah. Let's go. Super gimmicky. Let's go. Oh, wow. Oh, Tom. Like swirling all around me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. What's weird is it like, let's have a conversation here. I didn't expect the perceived depth to be like that deep. Yeah, it's a full body experience. Yeah. Well, you were saying, you kind of corrected me that you're like, you can't focus on the positions of the speakers. Correct. If you do want to break it down technically, we're talking about phantom centers. Like when you have a stereo set of speakers, there's a left and right. But when something's panned up the middle, there's a there's a phantom center there. You hear it coming from this spot, even though there's no speaker there. So the same kind of applies here. So you've got a speaker and a speaker, which means there's a phantom center here. And so speaker and speaker, so there's a phantom center here. Speaker, speaker, so there's a phantom center here. And then in addition to that, there's speaker and speaker, so there's a phantom center here. And speaker and speaker, so there's a phantom, so there's phantom centers, like you can literally pinpoint it from anywhere. Right. And the way our ears perceive things would, would be the relationship it has binaurally with our heads so you know if we're hearing something in front of us mm -hmm. there's also we're still hearing stuff from behind with reflections 100 so, percent. so if something's on the right side our left ear is still picking up something 100 percent. so that that's how dolby atmos kind of tricks your brain into thinking you know there's something over here yeah you're hearing the because there is side. still something somewhere else so this was really wild so not only do you have like front to back like depth and like panning but then you start getting into panning like 360 degrees and then front to back at any point. But then you also get into automation. So like you want something to go from up here to back over there. There's just so many more parameters. Okay, so reverb. How do you handle reverb? Is there like Atmos reverbs or is it like a stereo reverb that you have here and a stereo reverb that you have there and a stereo reverb that you have there? Well, there, there are Atmos reverbs. Okay. Um, so there's a 712 reverbs that go into the Atmos bed. Um, and so if you like push the fader up into that reverb, it just creates space everywhere? Yeah, so in 712. So it doesn't include these two rear height channels. Okay. And it wouldn't include our width channels. Okay. Um, which make our room 914. Got it. So, I mean, I found that using sets of stereo effects mm -hmm. kind of translate better and you can have more control over them. Yeah. So, you know, having a reverb that starts in the front and then you delay it on the sides and delay it even more on the back, you can create like a sense of something moving through you like on a snare reverb. It can kind of go through the room, kind of like you would hear it naturally somewhere. And so that would be a situation where you would set those, so that would be like three reverbs, right? Like right. three oxes. Three of the same reverb. But just delayed yeah, by milliseconds. With a little more pre-delay in each one. And so then when you push that up and the snare drum goes crack, it automatically goes crack, like yeah. that. And you can also include height with it as well, so you can have it kind of go upwards <laughs> or swoop down on you. It's you, you have a 360 space to work in now. Okay. One of the things that I talk about a lot on the channel that you guys know is being fast and efficient with your moves, making as few moves as possible to get to the finish line. That helps keep your perspective fresh. There's a whole bunch of things that go into that, not over EQing something, not roasting your ears, keeping fresh perspective. How do you manage with that like almost infinite adjustability? How do you manage like workflow and keeping your ears fresh, not getting fatigued, losing perspective? How long does it take you to mix a song in stereo? And how much longer does it take you to mix a song in Atmos? Well, so if I'm working with already pre-mixed stems, 
Got it. It's actually faster to, to mix in Atmos. So you, everything's already developed sonically. It sounds like the stereo record. Yeah. And now we're just placing in a space. Is, and it, it's a lot more creative. There's less technical true. things with that. Is that the most common way that people mix in Atmos is mix sonically in stereo and then bring it into more of just a location placement? For right now, yes. Got it. Yeah, because I think that would be really difficult to be like, okay, I think I want this guitar to be back over there. Now I have to EQ it and compress it and reverb it and, right. and, and. Yep. It's a lot easier just to do that in stereo. We're all used to it. Yeah. And then bring it in here and actually develop the space that it's created in. Um, and a, lo a lot of th time is spent on, on effects and stuff because mm -hmm. obviously you have a lot of creativity involved with it. Totally. Um, but I found some things to just work. So I have a template now of a lot of different effects Got that it. I'll throw into a certain session and, and get it that way. Got it. L let's just talk about this room because I know there's a few different ways to do it. Right. How technically does this work? How do you get audio out to so many channels? <laughs> Well, it, it's a bit of a mess. So <laughs> we use two computers. So our main computer will run Pro Tools. Okay. And then that is connected via MADI to our second computer, which then renders the audio with okay. the Dolby Atmos renderer. Okay. And then that outputs to our speakers. So the renderer is what's outputting. Got it. So it takes two computers. Uh, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. That's how you guys are. So okay. the reason we use two computers is it ruined, you don't run out of CPU. So if you're running Got a it. big Pro Tools session and the renderer. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. this would be so much more CPU intensive. Exactly. So using two computers just makes it more safe. So we're not going to run out of any CPU. But so it's just a stable way to do it. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, if you're mixing with stems, you're not going to have a whole lot of plugins. That's true. So you can do it on one computer. More, a lot of people are. It's more panning and reverbs and stuff like that. Right. Okay. So technically, what like is there an interface that has X amount of outputs? We have to use, we're using Avid Matrix and okay. the uh, HD Maddies as okay. well. Because to get 128 channels of audio. When we mix normally, it's two channels of audio, left and right. And this is how many? Well, there's 128 objects okay. that have to run between the two computers. So between Pro Tools and the renderer. And then it's outputting 914 to our monitors. Now, this, is, this brings up an interesting topic. And I think I want to... Let me know in the comments down below if you want more information on Atmos. Because every single pro mixer, like big pro mixer that I'm friends with is putting Atmos rigs in their rooms. And so it's a very interesting situation. Like it feels like Atmos is here to stay. This doesn't feel like a gimmick. It doesn't feel like a fad or a trend. There's so many people dumping so much money into Atmos. Yeah. It feels like it's going to stay. Let me know if you're interested in this kind of stuff and if you want more info on this. Let's do a little bit of like a tour and of all the gear that is in this studio because who doesn't want to see that? If you like anything that you've seen in this video, there will be links in the description down below to go check them out. Those links go to Sweetwater. Sweetwater sponsors all of my videos. I've been getting all my gear from Sweetwater for a really, really long time. And they have incredible customer service, super quick shipping. They literally have everything. So if you like anything you've seen in this video, hit the links in the description below. And if you use those links, it goes a long ways to help support this channel. And I very, very much appreciate it. Okay, so here is the room, Studio B, here at Sweetwater, which is an amazing room. You guys seen it on my studio, on my Sweetwater tour. So I guess first thing is the centerpiece. We've got Avid S6 right here. And then here is the rendering computer. Uh, and this is where all the panning happens, right? And where you can kind of see the changes being made. So when someone's listening to an Atmos mix, all of this data, all of these points and all of these objects, they have to, that's metadata that has to go along with them. Right. <laughs> so how big are these files? How big is an Atmos mix? Oh, it depends. If you're using 128 objects, I mean, you're talking like, you could probably get five or six gigabytes. In a single song? In a single WAV file. So it's an ADM WAV file. Um, and when you import that back into Pro Tools, it actually opens up all of your objects and all of your automation. So mastering engineers have a lot more control now over your mixes. Oh, well, that's a, that's a topic for a different video. <laughs> okay, so speakers, we've got all PMCs. These are PMC 8.2s, is that what they're called? Uh, yes, 8.2 XPDs on the left and right. 8.2 okay. is the center. So the XPD is just that uh, cabinet on the bottom. <laughs> Those are all the subs, like, yeah for gigantic subs. So correct me if I'm wrong. So so that's like your, uh, where's my finger? So that's left, center, right. And then these, where's my finger? Right there and right there. So those are literally just making it sound wider, just giving you width. And then that continues on around 
side speakers. Yep, side speakers, back speakers, top speakers. And so what are these top speakers? Oh, so they're all CI-65. CI-65s, okay. How much did this room cost to set up like this? Can you even say? Yeah, yeah, so uh, without the S6, um, and I think without the computers and stuff, it's 151,000 <laughs> for our room. And an S6 is like, they start at like 50, right? Yeah, Ish. About okay, so, so we're well over 200. Right. Not including the room, just the gear and the setup. Yes. Dude. Thank you. Of course. That was unreal. So that is Atmos. That's a brief overview of how it works here. Sweetwater Studio B. Links in description for all the stuff in, <laughs> in this video. I actually will put some links in the description to some of this gear if you want to actually go check it out yourself. Because who doesn't want to drool over ridiculous gear? So go hit the links in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe. Drop me a comment. Let me know if you want to know more about Atmos. If you want me to dig into this harder. That's it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.